Well, thank you everybody for joining. It's always wonderful to hear you listening and hear you asking questions. So uh, please feel free to drop them in the chat, as Lauren said. We like to do them at the end because sometimes a question will actually refer to multiple of the presentations. Um, so the COVID Information Commons started um, when COVID started, <laughs> pretty much. Um, the National Science Foundation contacted the Northeast Big Data Hub in March of 2020 and asked if we could create an open portal for people to easily find uh, NSF funded rapid awards. And those are the awards that the government gives out when there's a crisis. Uh, so NSF has rapids, I believe NIH has rapids. And so at the time uh, we went into the, the simple search of NSF and there were exactly 32 awards. I'll never forget this. And today we have over 13,000. <laughs> so, um, you know, none of us thought it would last this long and none of us thought it would get this big and it's just going to keep going as we know. So we were really delighted to be able to help with this, to create basically a fair portal to make research findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable. Um, and that's how the kick got started. Um, in our first, uh, after we, we got the award in March. It's a rapid award, so it's hurry up. Um, they contacted us in March, uh, contacted us in March, we got the money in May, and we launched our MVP in July. Um, so it was really very quick. And at the time, we invited two researchers to present um, in our kickoff webinar so that it wasn't just administrative, here's a portal. And 40 more researchers asked if they could present. We were like, whoa. So on our first call, we said, okay, welcome to the COVID Information Commons community. We'll keep presenting to each other and working together until we're done. And we're not done yet. Um, so we have, um, it's an open resource to explore research addressing the COVID-19 pandemic and the longitudinal impacts, as we know, which will be forever. And then um, you can search the COVID awards and PI or principal investigator database. We have a really cool machine learning map clustering tool we'll show you. Um, and the initial 2020 award was then expanded with an extension award um, in 2021, which goes um, through October of 2025. And uh, we'll see if uh, they still want us to keep doing this. We'll see. But we actually are archiving in Dryad, for those of you who are familiar with Dryad, so it has longitudinal um, life. Next slide, please. And as Lauren said, it was launched by the Convergence Accelerator, which is now the TIP Director at Technology Innovation and Partnerships NSF, and we're very grateful for their support. So the KIT community started from nothing in 2020, just like everything COVID-related or COVID-19 related. Um, and the community has actually grown to over 3,600 individuals and, and over 800 organizations across the U.S. and 37 other countries. And in this past year, uh, we had a 25 increase, a 25% increase um, year over year. And I think a lot of that has to do with the great work Lauren has done. <laughs> I shouldn't talk too much about this, but she started the COVID Info Commons Researcher Working Group, the Student Working Group. Um, there are these, these very interesting data visualization and data science projects students can do, and it really has grown um, the community a lot. And the good news is that even though COVID-19 is not a wonderful thing to be living through or have lived through, now the students are getting more involved in understanding what did we learn from the data? How do we leverage the data? So what we're hoping and praying is that in the future, when they get to worry about this, when there is a COVID or whatever comes next, you know, that they will have some skills and tools that will enable them to help us since they're going to be our future. Um, so the community has continues to grow. Next slide, please. So um, when, you know, we were working with NSF, you know, after we first started, we said, we're very grateful, you know, for the support and the funding, but this is a disease. So we really feel like we should be working with NIH as well. And they were like, that's a good point. So uh, that's when they asked us, you know, if we would expand the kick. Um, so we got this kick extension award and they gave us another $2 million for four years. And since then, that's when we went from like 32 to 732 NSF awards and now over 13,000 NSF and NIH awards that are in the corpus. And we update it monthly. So this is a view if you were to go in on our main webpage and you could see where it was that, you know, search the COVID awards and PI database, you would go in here, you could put someone's name in there, or you could put, you know, epidemiology or 
bats or whatever. We have actually had presentations on bats. So um, this has a lot of awards in it. There's information on the researchers. You can, on the from the NSF ones, you can click through directly to their, um, their, uh, their award on the NSF website. With NIH, it brings you to the reporter tool and then you get to put the information in. And there are also uh, PI profiles for some of the principal investigators who choose to fill that in. And as you can see, there's a faceted search. So you can, um, you can search by funder, which is NSF or NIH, you can search by organization, a bunch of other things. This is the machine learning maps tool. Um, this is powered by Lingo4G from Carrot Search in Poland. And they actually take the 13,000 awards and then cluster them by topics. So it gives you a nice colorful view and allows you to find people that might be doing research in your area of interest or the interest that you're actually researching. It allows you to look by funder. It allows you to look by the institution that got the money. It allows you to look by PI name so that you can find the humans and the institutions you can collaborate with in your topic of interest. Next slide, please. And so after the machine learning maps tool, uh, I just wanted to share about some of the other research uh, resources we have. We have over 80 open source COVID-19 data sets. Lauren just did a scan to make sure that they haven't been archived. We had, have had some data sets archived, as you can imagine, related to COVID, but we try to keep an eye on that. So we just you know, took another scan through it this week. Um, we have a listing of publications, research groups and guides, um, and then research funding listings. There are still some funding resources as we look at long COVID and and uh, SARS-CoV-3, as we're going to hear about. Next slide, please. We do these quarterly webinars. We started out with monthly, and we gave people like five to seven minutes because they hadn't done any research yet, you know, in 2020, but they wanted to talk about it to find each other. Um, so now we're, we're quarterly, and then we say like, you know, 10 to 12 minutes because you actually have done the research, so we get to learn from each other. We've had over 130 individual presentations to date from NSF, NIH, and CDC researchers. Um, and if you know of any researchers that have been funded by these government agencies, please let us know or have them contact us, and we'd be happy to have them present on a future webinar. Next slide, please. So we also have a Meet the Researchers tab on the website. So you can browse the 130 plus research lightning talks. Um, and Lauren has actually categorized them as you can see COVID in biology, COVID in data. So if you wanted to subset them more easily, we also have the presentations, not just the video, but Lauren and the student team that we have have actually transcribed them into written English, not just the the quasi, you know, trans translations or transcriptions that are done on the internet, but the team has actually vetted each one. And then we actually have students that have translated them into Spanish and French, and we're going to be um, translating them into Hindi as well, which increases accessibility for people who may have, may think in one language, learn in another language, speak in a different language. So we really try to make it as accessible. The Meet the Researchers includes the PIs, such as on the, on the call with us today, NSF, NIH, CDC, but also the students who win the paper challenges. So the first one that you see on this screen, Aditya Kulkarni, um, he actually was one of the winners of the student paper challenge the first year that we had it. And so he was able to present on, on, a, on a webinar like this, and we have his material. All of these are actually also uploaded into the Columbia Academic Commons, so they get a digital object identifier, a DOI, for posterity um, with the researcher's permission. Next slide, please. So we really do try to make this very fair, you know, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. We put all of this on YouTube, um, so the videos, and we have little research spotlights, which, which gives people a little test, a taste of, you know, how did COVID impact science education, and then bring you to the video on that. Um, once again, with these transcriptions and translations, and it's a fun little, like, less than one, one minute way to see what's going on, and then click into a video that you might be interested in. Next slide, please. And then an exciting thing is I actually um, publish with Springer, um, and I've done a couple of books with them, Springer Nature, you may be familiar with them. And the books I've previously done were on a new standard that was just approved by IEEE <laughs> this past week um, on security and privacy called TIPS uh, for Clinical Internet of Things. 
but we're doing a new book with them, which is going to be um, with the, the speakers, uh, the PIs who've presented on these researcher lightning talks, who are NSF or NIH funded researchers. And they're gonna be writing chapters that talk about, you know, what was, um, what was the title of your project? Who is the funder? What was the goal of your research? What were the outcomes? And therefore, what are your recommendations regarding mitigation of future pandemics? And the reason we're doing this is because when we, when NSF first contacted us and said, we want you to write this, you know, create this portal so people could find COVID research, I went looking for COVID research because coronavirus has been around for decades and it was very hard to find anything. And so I feel like it's our duty <laughs> to document this better so that people can actually find what we've learned and not have to start from scratch. So we're excited about this. They're writing their chapters. I just got the second version of one of the chapters today. Um, and they'll be writing them this year and we plan to publish the beginning of next year. So we're excited that Springer Nature is supporting this and NSF is totally on board with it, which we're grateful for. And then we're able to give all these, uh, these PIs and these authors a voice. You could see there are about 30 chapters and about hundred authors. We really encourage them you know, to have all their researchers involved if they want their students involved. I love giving a voice to all of these researchers. Um, and so that's what we're going to be doing. So we're looking forward to that coming out and you'll all find out about it when it gets published. Next slide, please. So as I was mentioning and Lauren briefly mentioned, uh, we have a kick research working group if you'd like to join. Um, we've been talking about maybe doing a long COVID uh, piece of research. We haven't really kicked it off yet. If you have any ideas on joint research you would like to do, please let us know. And um, you, know, you can join us. That's always on our homepage. Next slide, please. And then we have the student working group, which has really grown. Um, and we're really excited that students really wanna learn how to get information out of this data and knowledge and insight for the future, for today and the future. And we have over 600 members from 230 organizations across the US and six other countries. Um, they can they um, participate in the projects that have already been um, have already finished from the last two semesters. These projects are available on our data science projects page on the hub, as well as through the KIC website on data visualization, analyzing pandemic policy project. They can use data sets from the COVID Info Commons, the Analyzing Pandemic Policy Project. Um, that, that one actually uses um, a University of Oxford database, very interesting. So we always use open data sets so anybody on the planet can leverage them. And there'll be a new project in the fall. Um, Lauren mentioned the Portfolio and Network Building Group, which is a really cool opportunity for students to meet each other. Um, it could be that they can help each other think through their research. It could be they meet a student at a college that they're planning to do their master's at, you know, whatever it is, so that we can collaborate together. We, As the Big Data Innovation Hub, our job is to be a collaboration hub and a catalyst for innovation. And so this really helps us do that with the students leveraging each other's content and knowledge, which is really exciting. So please invite any of your students, um, peer networking session. The next one will be June 28th. Next slide, please. Lauren mentioned the Kick Student Paper Challenge that occurs annually. Um, and so the final submissions are due July 31st. They can just go to the website. You can see a bit.ly here, 2024-kick-spc for Student Paper Challenge. They can um, enroll in that and then they'll get reminders submit the paper, and then we actually have incentives we were able to bake into the grant. Um, so I think the first place is like $400. You know, if it's a team, they share it. Um, and then second and third place, and we have that for the undergraduate community college cohort, as well as graduate. It's global. Uh, one of our winners was actually from South Africa, and uh, she actually was invited to speak at the Academic Data Science Alliance Conference in Texas this past year, which she was able to attend. So it's a wonderful professional development opportunity for students. So please encourage them to participate. Next slide, please. And actually, you can be a judge or a mentor, too. You can go to the website and sign up to be a judge or a mentor. So we're very interested in always making our content as accessible as possible. So as I was mentioning, it's available on YouTube. Um, there are translations done. And then we also put the, the information on the Columbia Academic Commons. If you know of any students or anyone that might be interested in translating into another language <laughs> or the languages that we currently serve, please, please let, let us know. We have this real program at the Hub, you know, research experience and leadership opportunities. And we love when the, when the whole community participates. Next slide, please. So that's it. So thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being part of the kick. This is 
you know, you're all part of my family now. Mm -hmm. um, and so stay in the loop for upcoming events. You can join our mailing list. We send out a monthly newsletter. And if there's anything else uh, we can do, we'd love to know. Thank you, Lauren.